As you've heard this hour, researchers are uncovering new science indicating a connection between our gut and our overall health. Scientists are urging people to pay close attention to their gut. In it could be clues to why you're having stomach issues or problems with your mood and memory. Between 500 and 1,000 strains of bacteria called the microbiome live in our guts at any one time. We're going to learn why this is important from a physician who focuses on the microbiome. But first, let's go back to science class and take a look at what the microbiome actually is and how it may influence your weight, your energy levels, even the choices you make. Mary Beth Albright from our partners at the Washington Post reports. Research shows that the gut microbiome affects a lot of how we experience our daily lives. Emotions, weight, brain functioning, even our food choices. But how does it work? The gut microbiome is a collection of trillions of microbes, or microscopic organisms. These microbes, like bacteria and fungi, live in your digestive tract, mostly in your large intestine. Digestion is just your body taking raw materials, food, and turning it into something it can use. Nice crust. Digestion makes glucose, which runs your brain and muscles. It also enables your body's messengers, like hormones and neurotransmitters. Your digestive system is a factory for turning food into fuel, and your microbes are its workers. And what you get out of it depends a lot on the quality of what you put into it. Gut microbes have their own genes, which affect the way your human genes act. There are about 20 to 25,000 different human genes that make up your body. Sounds like a lot. But there are millions of different microbe genes inside of you that influence how your human genes act. In some studies, the microbiomes of healthy mice were transplanted into stressed mice. The stressed mice then showed fewer anxiety symptoms. Fruit flies with particular bacterial species in their microbiomes ate more protein. When researchers changed the flies' microbiomes, the flies ate more sugar. In one study, researchers found that many elite athletes have a group of bacteria that helps break down lactate and could help performance and recovery. When these bacteria were transplanted into mice, the mice's treadmill performance increased. And this is all great news because you can't change your genes, but you can change your microbiome for the better. And one of the quickest ways to do that is through food. There are immeasurable other factors that influence your gut microbiome, where you live, sleep, exercise, stress. But what your body makes and what kind of microbes your gut has depend a lot on the food you eat. You can change your microbiome and potentially your daily experiences and long-term health through food. Recent technology makes it possible to test your gut microbiome at home to get a peek at what's living inside you. For The Washington Post, I'm Mary Beth Albright. Our thanks to our partners at The Washington Post. Let's bring in now Dr. Raphael Kalman. He's an internist and functional medicine physician who focuses on the microbiome. Dr. Kalman, welcome to The Y. Thank you. Thanks for having me. In your book, The Whole Brain, you say that it's the brain, the gut, and the microbiome that together make up the whole brain. So could that basic understanding be the key to helping people figure out some of their health issues? Oh, absolutely. Um, there is a plethora of research uh, that shows that the trillions of gut bacteria within us play a vital role in immune function and brain function and our overall health. You know, the trillions of gut bacteria are const in constant communication to the brain uh, via different mechanisms. The, the microbiome, gut bacteria are producing some of the, the same neurotransmitters that our brain produces. So that's one direct mode of communication. In addition, it communicates via the immune system and by the endocrine system. So there's a bi-directional communication um, between the microbiome and the brain. Therefore, what's going on in the microbiome plays a vital role in the health of the brain. So when the microbiome is healthier, our moods are better, even our cognitive function is better. And it's, it's actually a now a modality of treatment 
um, for anxiety and depression by improving the microbiome. So it's really um, a revolutionary uh, new way of understanding our health. I think revolutionary is a great word to describe it. And I also think it's common to hear vocabulary and things we should and shouldn't do that we might not fully understand all the time. So I'm wondering if you can help us understand what's a prebiotic, what's a probiotic, when and why should we take them? How can our viewers take full advantage of them? Right. So a probiotic are actually the bacteria uh, in our gut. And we could take different probiotics to improve the profile, the, the, the diversity of the microbiome. Prebiotics are nutrients that feed the bacteria. It's what they like to feed on and what nourishes the microbiome. So these prebiotics uh, invariably come from um, vegetables, some fruit, and some some fiber, but not only fiber, that um, enables the microbiome to flourish. And when you eat the foods that have a lot of prebiotics, or you take prebiotics as a supplement, that can improve the diversity of the microbiome and it can help the microbiome flourish. And by doing so, that's a a gateway to the treatment of a wide variety of of diseases. Psychiatrists prescribe medicines like antidepressants and stimulants for attention disorders, and you say that's an old-fashioned approach to treating the brain. I'm wondering why. Well, you know, it's I wouldn't say necessarily that it's an old-fashioned. It's certainly... um, not the most progressive and frontier approach to uh, the, tr- uh, the treatment of depression and anxiety. So when you improve the microbiome, we can have ho- a holistic, uh, broad uh, effect on the brain, and that's really the way to treat the brain. You know, it's similar, um, now again, that doesn't mean to the exclusion of antidepressants, but it's certainly a, a deeper way and a more holistic wa- way to improve the overall brain and and therefore to make an impact on depression and anxiety. It's akin to the, a TMS, which is a, a treatment that <clears throat> is magnetic pulsations to the brain, which helps tremendously with depression because again, it's a holistic approach to improving the brain. So the bottom line here is that the 20th century was largely about defeating germs with the discovery of antibiotics as the crowning achievement. Now we have bacteria that are resistant to our own drugs. How do we have a better relationship with and really embrace the microbiome in our own gut? Yeah, I think number one is to take a whole different understanding of bacteria, that they're not the enemy. In fact, um, they they are our best friends. They, they play a significant role in orchestrating our health. We have to have a whole different understanding of bacteria that by and large, uh, when they work together in us and when they're flourishing and healthy, they are our, our allies, our, our best friends. So we don't want to indiscriminately uh, kill off bacteria. That model um, is good for certain, you know, for certain infectious diseases. But uh, at, at the same uh, time, we're, we're paying a heavy price because we're also killing off bacteria that are vital to our health. So we have to limit the, the amount of antibiotics we use and, and, and really apply tremendous discretion uh, with the administration of antibiotics. And um, always remember to use probiotics and prebiotics whenever we use antibiotics. And then we should concentrate on improving the microbiome, improving the health of bacteria. So it's a 180 degree turnaround from the way we understood bacteria and disease in the last 150 years. Miracle of science. Dr. Raphael Kelman, thank you so much for joining the Y. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me.